Arcadian Atlas is a tactical RPG by Twin Otter Studios, published by Serenity Forge. Twin Otter Studios is an independent game developer out of Texas, started in 2015 by the siblings Taylor and Becca Blair. This brother-sister pair made a studio and the point, they say, is that they wanted to make games that fuse modern elements with classic aesthetics that they would want to play themselves. Arcadian Atlas is the first title under this LLC. Serenity Forge isn't new, though. As a publisher, they are known for games like Doki Doki Literature Club, As Dusk Falls, Long Gone Days, which we've talked a little bit on this channel before, and several others. The first thing anyone is gonna notice about Arcadian Atlas is the visuals. They look incredible in motion. Screenshots are a little rougher, but the amount of facial animation and emotion that they can get out of this pixel art style was nothing short of astonishing. I was shocked multiple times by the emotion they could portray just by moving a few dark pixels around. I've never seen them do it quite like that before and I loved it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. The portraits are very nice. They ha look hand-drawn, good art. Some of them look kind of funky. Beards can look painted on, helmets can look like some weird animal on the head. But for the most part, they are pretty darn good. The sprites though were fantastic. They were my probably favorite bit of the aesthetic of this game. Arcadian Atlas also boasts some absolutely beautiful environments. The downside to them though is that they are a 2D isometric plane as opposed to a 3D model, which shouldn't be that big of a deal except that you can't then move around the environments like say Final Fantasy Tactics. So it can be a little bit difficult to see behind things Although they do make it transparent, so you can see through them, but if you're trying to move from, say, behind a cliff, and you're trying to move next to an enemy that's on the cliff, that can be really difficult to see that difference. And so you try to move next to them, and then you can't attack them, and you don't understand why. Having that 3D model where you could shift the environment to see what was happening would have been helpful. I also know that's a lot more work. So I don't think it's game-breaking, but it would be nice if they try another step in this same genre, if that would be something that they could add. Now, the game has a pretty good pixel art font as well, and I enjoyed it. It can become difficult to read depending on how you see things or the environments you're in. Certain letters are more difficult to be distinct than others. Like K, for example, is very difficult to notice. But overall, I thought it was good. However, if you do have trouble, they did put an option in the game to change it to a very simple Latin style font that's very, very clear. So if by chance that's an issue, the settings were done well. Speaking of those settings, I thought they handled that pretty well. There's not overboard, there's not a crazy amount of them, but there's enough to make you feel like you have some control over what you're getting out of your game and what your PC can handle. Of course, this is a pixel art game. It's pretty low in intensity, so it, you don't need that beefy of a computer, right, to play this. It runs perfectly fine. I also played it on Steam Deck and had a pretty darn good experience. Performance-wise, I mean, very few complaints. The load times could be a bit long, especially for this style of game, it felt like you shouldn't need that long of a load time. The other thing that was surprising to me was that it actually was way better on controller for me than my mouse and keyboard, as for some reason the, you know, you can use WASD to move the camera, but it wouldn't move past a certain point of being around your character. So the controller I felt had way easier movement and camera control than PC and mouse but that may differ for each person. That said, let's get into the game. While Arcadian Atlas wears its inspiration on its sleeve, the major difference between Final Fantasy Tactics and Arcadian Atlas is that Tactics itself was a strategy RPG that had a good story. Arcadian Atlas is a story-driven game that has strategy RPG gameplay. So what I mean by that is the gameplay in Arcadian Atlas, it, lacks a lot of the depth and complexity that Tactics boasted. The skills, 
classes, ability swapping are all there, but they're somewhat surface. Didn't have the depth I was quite looking for. They're still kind of fun and there's some cool moves in there and I enjoyed, you still are able to bring skills from your previous class into the next one, but your classes are more limited. For example, you start with one of four, the Cavalier, the Ranger, the Apothecary, or the Warmancer. And they're kind of what you expect. The Cavalier is essentially like the Knight. It's the hard hitting frontline fighter. You have the Ranger, which is very self-explanatory. Your range fighter. Apothecary is essentially your healer. And then the Warmancer is your mage. At a certain level, and I won't spoil that, but at a certain level, you can promote your units and they get to pick from one of two that promote from that starter class. And then as far as I know, that's it. If there's another promotion, I didn't get to it. And I would be a little surprised because I had nowhere near enough to master anyone unless I stayed in the first class and didn't promote. And there wasn't a lot left, it felt like. And I was way powerful enough to finish the game. So if there was another class, uh, I didn't see it. The classes were cool. I didn't mind them. I thought they had some cool ones. I liked that they were a little bit different and not necessarily your standard, but there just wasn't as deep of a system as I would have liked. Each class has essentially two trees. Some uh, Warmancer actually has three, but a couple different trees you can go down, but you can still go back and do the other ones as well. So it doesn't limit you that way. Although in some cases it'd be really silly to go the other one and just splits your force there. But all classes I felt like were fairly useful. The Ranger though was kind of a downer because they didn't really offer up much. There isn't a lot of ways for you to get more damage for them. They could do some status effects, but it wasn't very reliable. So I kind of felt like it was an underused class. All of them, there's a bit of a rock, paper, scissors style thing where as a cavalier, if you attack another cavalier, you'll do okay damage. But if you attack the warm answer, you'll do a lot and vice versa. The warm answer, if they use magic on another warm answer or even an apothecary, it does small damage. But if you hit a cavalier or a ranger, it does much more. So there's a little bit of that play to reason why you want to have a well-rounded team and as you promote them and you do the different options you'll find different uses for each of them depending on how you play so it's still good gameplay still enjoyable i still liked it i just felt like there was a lot more depth to be had i would have liked to have more classes to be able to change outside of promotion levels you know like tactics you can be leveling up your jobs and changing classes constantly i i love that kind of progression but i understand that's probably a lot to ask of a small team so that's fair enough. Even with the four difficulty choices, I don't think that this game is very challenging. You have to be a little more thoughtful if you're playing on the harder difficulty, but just on normal, I only had one time where I made a dumb mistake and had to die and had to try again. Every other time was a pretty easy wipe. Now, that might be different for you if you don't have the experience or time in these strategy RPGs like I do, but I, I still, felt like a little more challenge on the base would have been nice. That said, again, there's there's options, so I'm not too picky about that, as long as it's fun, right? And I enjoyed it. If you have experience with strategy RPGs, I don't think this is gonna pose much of a threat for you. That said, Arcadian Atlas also has no autosave, so make sure you're saving often, or if you have a bad day, you'll be upset. The music in this game was pretty nice. I enjoyed it, but it was definitely odd. It was different than I expected, as it was a kind of jazz-driven, jazz-infused score. I don't mind that. We've certainly seen some tremendous jazz scores from Persona 5, for example. The battle theme I felt was a little odd. Like I wanted some kind of Lord of the Rings or you know, some kind of epic medieval sound and there just wasn't that. Now some of that might be about who they could get to do the music. I don't really know that story, but I would have loved maybe even just like a, a couple of different genres or multiple themes. Again, you know, I don't want to judge too much. It's a small team, but that, you know, depending on how you deal with music, that may or may not be uh, a, an issue for you. Gameplay itself is very similar to Final Fantasy Tactics. The loop consists of a story, cutscene, managing your troops, 
new equipment, upgrading your skills, etc. that kind of thing. Check the tavern for contracts, which are essentially side missions. Read over conversations, which kind of build up the lore and world building, which I enjoyed. And then battle, rinse and repeat. The menus used to handle all these were pretty user friendly. And other than one issue, which was me being more dense than anything really, I never had any issues. Those conversations I mentioned a second ago are actually quite good. I really liked reading them. I felt like they built up the world and what was going on, but they were quick reads. They weren't overly indulgent. So you never felt like you were sitting there for too long, but they were, they added a lot to the world of the game. As for the story itself, the basic plot line is that the king is dying. His new wife seems kind of power hungry and is taking over even so much as to delegitimize his daughters from the throne. The oldest daughter is, you know, inciting a rebellion to fight back to take the throne and the youngest daughter gets pushed away and sent into exile. There's a lot of unrest in the story and at some point tarot cards kind of come in. The two protagonists end up on either side and so for a while you're kind of going back and forth. There are a few decisions that you as a player will make throughout the game and they do influence the story and dialogue and stuff in, in, in some ways. However, I don't think that it changed that much. I did enjoy the story overall. It felt a little maybe either rushed or unsure of itself. Now the tarot cards, I feel like never really had an explanation or a reason for being in the story. The dialogue could be kind of stiff at points and characters didn't always make sense as to their motivations or why they were doing what they were doing. The ending left me feeling like uh, details were left out, like there was stuff missing. That said, I finished this game in about maybe seven hours and I thought it was, it was worth another playthrough just to see the other choices and to try out different classes and such. But if you feel that way, make sure you understand if you skip a cutscene that has a choice in it, it will auto choose for you. So be aware of where those are and don't skip that cutscene. All of that said, I think that the story had good bones but needed more meat to it. Again, this is a first title, and so I like the ideas here. I think there was good start here, like to build of the, the political intrigue and the different viewpoints and all of that. I like the idea. I like the idea of your protagonist kind of being torn apart on different sides of a war and trying to figure out how to make that work and how to still be with each other and, and what that means. I like the idea of King and his daughters and the wife and all of that. I think all of that's good stuff. The world building was good. I enjoyed that. I just wanted more, more to grab onto. And I still feel like if you're going to include something like the tarot cards, they need to make sense in some way. I, I still don't understand why they're in the story or like, where do they come from? What's the point of them? There's there's not enough there for me to grab a hold of. So what I'm hoping here is that they can take what they learned from this story and in their next outing, really dive headlong into these areas. I think they have the chops for them. I really do think that they have the skill there because I felt like everything they did was well done. I just think there needs to be more. And out of, you know, from my perspective as a game developer, that's a good problem to have. Arcadian Atlas was an enjoyable experience and well worth a little jaunt in the gaming space that I love. I think it was a tremendous first outing from Twin Otter Games, and I am 100% looking forward to whatever they do next. Arcadian Atlas was far from perfect, but it was clearly made with a lot of heart and a lot of love. And I have nothing but good things to say for that type of developer. <laughs>